Welcome back to a, another video focusing on the ASA and FTD Remote Access VPN with ICE and Duo integration. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at workflow 2 and how this works configuration wise. Again, for those that haven't watched the previous videos, I do urge you to go back and take a look at those, uh, take a look at workflow 1 and also take a look at the uh, video that I did actually covering uh, the benefits and considerations of each of the workflows that I am going to go over. This is workflow 2, there will be another video around workflow 3 coming shortly so do look out for that as well. So the only big difference essentially from uh, workflow 1 in workflow 2 is that we're changing, as I mentioned previously, we're changing um, where the ASA or the FTD points to uh, for, for radius requests. So in Workflow 2, we're actually going to use the Duo proxy as opposed to uh, Cisco ICE as that next stop, if you like, from, from the ASA. So that's only the, 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 the big difference, essentially, in, in terms of Workflow. So let's get into the configuration. We've discussed the benefits. Again, uh, do go back and uh, take a look at those videos if you want to um, hear more about those as well as the uh, considerations. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to get into the configuration now. So we already have um, the, the, the configuration set up on the Duo admin panel from our workflow one in terms of the actual application. Uh, one of the main things we're going to need to do is we're going to need to change the um, where the ASA points to in terms of its radius server. Uh, and we'll also take a look at the way that uh, we need to make sure that ICE is set up in order for this to work before we can test. So we'll start by changing the configuration on the ASA and I'll just refresh because I don't think I'm still logged in. Let's try it. Yep, I am still logged in. So um, we can see right now we have the the one uh, server group configured, which is, which is great. And then within that server group, we've got this uh, IP address here. Um, which is pointing at the moment to uh, ICE. So what we'll do for the purposes of this video and because we're going to be using Duo as the, the next stop if you like is we'll, we'll just create a new uh, radius server group and we'll call this Duo, Duo off proxy let's call this uh, max three times okay we'll leave all that as uh, let's just sorry kind of this basis we'll leave all the rest of the the settings as default so within the duo off proxy what we'll do is we'll add a um, server and interface will still be via the outside yes it will um, so our radius server IP or our off proxy IP address is going to be 192.168.99.20 and I'll just verify that as well just to make sure. Timeout will change to 60 seconds and we'll use the new 18.12 and 18.13 UDP parts. Uh, retry interval is 10 seconds, we can leave that and our secret key, we need to make sure that this uh, secret key um, is also matching on the authentication proxy. So we'll just put in a lovely insecure password for this demonstration. And we'll leave the rest as default there. And we'll just press OK on that. So once we've created that, we need to make sure that if we just go to um, our connection profile, we need to make sure that the authentication method is matching now. So we're still going to keep it as uh, AAA, but we'll just change it to do, do our off proxy now. We we'll press OK on that. 
yeah that's fine and uh, let's just apply that so that's going to apply the the configuration on the ESA side now which is good so if we just bring up access to our server now which is in my environment currently acting of the active directory server and uh, the authentication proxy is installed on there as well um, now the authentication proxy configuration that we're currently showing is that of uh, workflow one so um, there's a few things we need to add and change here so uh, first of all we need to add a uh, radius client which is going to be used for the primary authentication and essentially what this means is that we're going to uh, refer to this to uh, use ice as the um, primary authentication source so if we just um, to begin what we'll do is we'll type in here radius client and then we need to add the host and in our case it's going to be 192.168.99.7 followed by the secret which we'll do as wizkid uh, oops wizkid labs and that's it for that section now with radio server auto uh, we are, you know, we were automatically going to get that push notification um, that we looked at in uh, workflow one. Uh, our I key and S key and API host, we can leave the same because we're not actually going to create a new application in this demonstration. You could create a new application, um, but we're not going to create a new application um, just purely because it's already created and we're just changing a few um, fields. So in this case now our radius IP address is actually going to be the ASA um, So if we do 192.168.107.10 I believe it is and it's our secret is going to be the secret that was specified uh, on the ASA Obviously not secure in a live environment Make sure your secrets are secure and not shared um, and now for client AD, what we're going to do is we're going to change this to use radius client as a primary authentication source. So once we're done with that, let's just press save and then we'll restart the authentication proxy. So we'll just restart that now and then we've got a few things we need to do on ICE as well. So that authentication proxy is now started. So let me just bring ICE over here. Okay. Okay, so on ICE, we're still logged in. Yes, we are. What we need to do is we now need to add the authentication proxy as a... Uh, device a network device so we go to administration network resources and then network devices and then what we need to do is to click add let's give it a name so we'll call it um, duo of proxy and then we'll give it the IP address that it's assigned 192.168.99 let me just check the IP address actually that's assigned to the authentication proxy that is 99.20 okay and I'll specify in my environment this is a radius device and it's in my lab and then for radius authentication settings we just need to specify um, the uh, shared secret for this device so as i said if we go back to the authentication proxy a minute our shared secret in this case is going to be with kid labs okay and then once we're done we'll just submit that save that there Now that that network device has been added, what we'll need to do now is we just need to create a policy set now if one's not already created. So we've got the one here that we use for uh, workflow one. So let's just 
add a new one for demo demo access VPN and we'll call this workflow 2 or WF2 um, default network access uh, let's specify quickly some attributes so we'll just say for, uh, network device uh, device type let's say and we said it was a radius device um, and let's use an and statement actually and we'll say if the network access device IP address is 192.168.99.20 use that so now needs to match on two of those we'll save that policy set and then we'll go into that policy set as well So our authentication, we'll just use a default and we'll use our, uh, we'll search for that user in our demo network with kid AD and then we'll create a new authorization policy, um, authorization rule one and we'll just do that to permit access. Um, so that's a radius accept. Um, and we'll do attributes will match on uh, let's match on identity group let's match on external group and we'll match on the users okay so now we're done with that we'll press save and if we go to operations radius live logs we should now theoretically be ready to test so let me get up the uh, test devices and we can verify that this workflow works as it should do as well so if I just bring these devices over here there we go. and then our second factor authentication device and from a kind of end user perspective they won't really notice any difference whatsoever because they're still connecting or terminating their VPN um, to the ASA um, and they'll still receive the push notification so um, let's press connect on this now and we'll connect anywhere and let's enter our password we should get the dual notification come up There we go. So if we just approve that, you can see now that we should be able to establish that uh, VPN session there as well. Okay, that took a little bit longer than I would have liked. Um, nothing to do with Duo probably just my uh, lab connectivity so what we'll do is just once again just verify that workflow again and then we can take a look at the logs in ice and also in the duo admin panel as well so yeah let's disconnect from this it just looks like it's taking a little bit longer than usual in my lab environment Okay, so let's connect again. Let's connect and we'll enter the password for that user. And we should get that duo notification come up. Accept that. There we go. That seems to be establishing a little bit quicker than uh, previously which is better there we go now we're connected to the VPN so it's all good there now you can see from the ice logs we also have um, our logs so if we click on those logs as well we get a breakdown we can see that it's using the workflow 2 authentication policy that we created and the first authorization rule that we created which is good we can see the information from our active directory and some other useful bits as well. So we've just shown now that workflow 
2 is working as it should do. So if we just log back into Duo, it may have logged me out now. Yes, it has. Within Duo, yeah, we can see the uh, logs here. So if we click on this here, uh, we can see that you're being granted access here to uh, Workflow 1, which is great. So, um, obviously it says application remote access VPN workflow one because we've not cr changed the application name or created another application, but it's still, um, still using workflow two. Um, the ASA still goes to the duo authentication proxy before, uh, ice as well. So that's workflow two. That's how workflow two works. And in our next video, we'll take a look at workflow three.